Okay, I believe we're recording here. So uh, the today is the first day back from spring break. Um, we had uh, I had out a worksheet that uh, was labeled uh, concentration worksheet, uh, and uh, we're going to discuss how to do that sort of stuff today. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to make dilutions, uh, how st substances dissolve. Uh, we're going to talk about mass percent. We're going to talk about volume, and we'll uh, volume percentages, and we'll talk about molarity. Okay. Uh, this uh, sounds like it's a lot of stuff, but truthfully, uh, a lot of this is the same. Mass and volume percent are basically the same idea, uh, and molarity isn't too difficult. Um, dissolving substance will only take a few minutes. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, factors that affect the rate of dissolving solids. All right, uh, this is something that you already know about. If you've ever made iced tea, um, you know about how, uh, what sorts of factors affect uh Solids dissolving. Matter of fact, if you've made Kool-Aid, you know about most of them. Uh, start out here. Uh, temperature affects the rate of things dissolving. Uh, it turns out that as temperature increases, the rate of dissolving increases also. This is why when people make tea or coffee, uh, they heat the water because it actually dissolves the tea and the coffee, uh, the molecules in the tea and the coffee, much faster at the higher temperatures. Okay. Step two, particle size. Uh, let's say we're trying to make that iced tea and we pull out our five, uh, our five pound bag of sugar out of, uh, out, of our, uh, out of our cabinet and we find that nobody's used it in a long time. It's, it's just one big giant solid chunk. Is that going to dissolve well? Well, the answer is no. Uh, because when you take a look at this, which of these two are going to dissolve better? A single large chunk or a lot of smaller chunks equal to the same weight? But now you've got more room in between for water molecules to attack and dissolve things. Well, the answer is pretty simple. Uh, as the size decreases of an object, the rate increases. All right, now, some people like to think of this as surface area. So let me, uh, let me write this in also. As surface area increases, the rate increases. Notice surface area here. If I measure the perimeter here, I'll get a certain number. Let's say four units. Uh, if I measure the surface area of these, uh, let's say we've got a third of a unit, a third of a unit, a third of a unit. So we got one and one third units times six. Uh, let's see, that is four thirds times six or four units. Well, I'll tell you what, I can tell which one already is bigger because this is essentially, uh, let's see, 4 times 6 is 24, 24 thirds is 8. This is 8 units. So this has much more surface area than this one. Matter of fact, there's twice as much surface area here as there is here, assuming that these are two-dimensional. Now, these are actually, the particles are actually three-dimensional, so this isn't as simple as that. But you get the general idea. Smaller grains of sugar actually dissolve quicker than larger grains, uh, or the larger chunks for that matter. Uh, mixing is the third thing we want to talk about. Uh, it turns out that it's something that anyone who's ever worked in the kitchen knows. Uh, the more mixing that you do, the larger the rate um, uh, the, of the solution, uh, or as the textbook calls it, solvation, S-O-L, solvation, okay. Salvation means the solids are dissolving. Um, let's see. Uh, mixing is kind of like adding temperature. Adding temperature, what it does is it makes the water molecules bounce around a little bit more. They shake and vibrate more. Um, so something that's shaking and vibrating more is going to have more access to all these little nooks and crannies inside the particles. Uh, mixing just has an effect of moving the water molecules around a bit more, so you get more water molecule interactions. Uh, so mixing and temperature are kind of related in that you're dealing with the, uh, the motion of the water molecules. The last thing is one that isn't, that, that isn't going to be one that you knew already. Uh, these three should have been ones you knew already. The fourth one is the nature of the solvent or solute. Uh, what I mean by this, when we talk about the nature, is we mean the polarity of the molecule or the non-polarity of a molecule. Now water, we learned in the last chapter, is a bent molecule because it has two lone pairs and two bonds. 
we also learned in the last chapter that the electronegativity of this bond is made up such that the electrons in the bond here spend more time with oxygen. So there's a slight negative charge down here and a slight positive charge up here. Same thing happens over here. This is a polar bond, so there's a slight negative charge and a slight positive charge. Now, overall, this water molecule has a positive zone up here and a negative zone down here. Uh, that means that things that are polar are going to be attracted to this molecule, to one end or the other, depending on whether you're talking about the positive part of it or the negative part of it. Uh, things that are ionic also will wind up being attracted too, to one end or the other. Uh, remember, opposites attract. Okay. Uh, now, when we measure concentrations, the basic idea is that every solution is going to have the solute distributed evenly throughout the solvent. So let's say that I've got a solution here. And these are the particles. Notice they are dissolved fairly equally spaced apart. Now, if I want to talk about concentration, this is the basic idea, uh, is that concentration talks about how many things are dissolved throughout. So between A and B, which one is more concentrated? Well, that's easy. That looks like solution B, right? Uh, but they're both fairly equally distributed. Okay. Uh, there are a variety of ways to measure concentration, one of which is parts per million. Um, uh, the, uh, the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, uh, has published uh, a document on their website uh, that's been out there. For, actually, the document's been out there for a long time before websites even existed. But uh, it talks about uh, how many parts per million of lead you're allowed to have in a water supply and still have it drinkable. There are certain amounts of mercury, lead, arsenic, and other uh, hazardous chemicals that are allowed in the water supply in a certain number of parts per million. Uh, carrots. Jewelry is measured in carrots. Uh, 20, uh, that is also a concentration uh, measurement. 24 karat gold is the same thing as 100% pure gold. Uh, so you don't have a solution if you have 24 karat gold. Uh, if you have 14 karat gold, on the other hand, you've got a certain percentage that is that is gold and a certain percentage that is not gold. Uh, there are a variety of reasons for doing that. Uh, a, it makes it cheaper uh, to make it a solution of gold. And uh, B, it also helps out because pure gold is extremely malleable. So 24 karat gold jewelry tends to get bent up quite a bit. Uh, so if you make something 14 karats, it's going to be a lot stronger because you're going to have another metal in there give strength it up. Um, uh, we also talk about percent by mass or percent by volume. We're going to talk about those next. And we're, we also talk about molarity. Uh, now, as far as the two that are big ones for chemistry class, that's these two. Okay. And like I said, mass and volume are basically the same equation, just used differently for, different, uh, for slightly different reasons. And I'll explain those in just a moment here. Uh, actually, I can explain it right now. Uh, you know, I'll do it in a moment. All right. So mass percent of solutions. Basic idea is this. Uh, mass percentage of a solution tells you how much, uh, what percent of the solute is found in a particular solution. Uh, you might, for instance, see, you know, 15% sodium bicarb solution, sodium bicarbonate solution. Uh, that might be done by mass. Okay. Uh, now, the reason for that, that it's done by mass, is because sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, is a solid. All right. Uh, if you wanted to do something else, like, uh, let's see, got to get a liquid here, 15% uh, juice, uh, this you're probably going to be doing by volume. The reason for it is that it's a lot easier to measure the volume of a juice, um, and that might be real fruit juice that you see sometimes on, uh, on cartons. It's only 15% by volume, and you measure by volume because it's easier to measure the volume of a liquid than it is to measure the mass of the liquid. Uh, here with sodium bicarb, uh, you can't really measure the volume, so it's easier to measure the mass. Um, so here's the basic idea, though. For mass percent, you take the mass of the solute and you divide by the mass of the solution and you multiply by 100. Now, what's important here to realize is that this is just like any other percentage that we've ever calculated before. 
you're going to get a percentage over here. You're taking a part on the top, and you're taking a whole on the bottom. Uh, notice something here. I'm going to write this a little bit differently. The whole, the solution, the entire solution is made up of two things. It's made up of solutes and solvent. So you have to be savvy as you're reading the question. Uh, are you being given the solute and the solvent to add together? Or are they telling you the solution and you don't have to add anything up? Okay. Uh, example here, let's see. A solution is prepared by mixing one gram of ethanol with 100 grams of water. Calculate the mass percent of ethanol in this solution. Okay, well, there we go. A percentage is being going to be calculated by taking a ratio and multiplying it by 100. Uh, this looks like the solute right here. This is the stuff being dissolved, and it looks like we have one gram of it. So we're going to write 1.00 grams on top. Now the question is, what do we write on the bottom? The bottom consists of the solution. The solution is made up of water and ethanol. So it's 100 grams and 1 gram. So we're going to write 101 grams on the bottom here. So if I do my math right here, the percent, according to the calculator, is going to come out to be 0 0.990 percent. All right, um, calculating molarity. Uh, molarity is the other uh, concentration measurement that chemists tend to use. Molarity is not extremely difficult. It's the most convenient one for chemists to use. And molarity just describes the number of moles per liter of solution. So it's just a ratio of how many moles per liter. If you remember back to October, we uh, learned that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. We also learn that one mole is uh, the molar mass from the periodic table. We just have to add it up. We also learn that one mole of a gas is 22.4 liters. This is moles of a solution. So we have a, we have a moles to liters for gases, and now we have moles to liters for solutions. Uh, the way that we set this up, molarity is symbolized with a capital letter M. Um, Units that are hidden in that M, capital letter M, are moles per liter. Uh, so basically, the calculation for it is molarity is number of moles of solute divided by liters of solution. Notice where, uh, if we write it shorthand, it looks like this, capital M, is lowercase n, number of moles. That's what I like to tend to think. That stands for number. There. And divided by liters. We're stuck with these units. We have to do liters, we have to do moles, and we always get molarity. So if it's not given to us in moles, we have to convert it to moles. If it's not given to us in liters, we have to convert it to liters. It's that simple. All right. Now, check this out. Why did we make all those moles at the beginning of the year? This is why. What's the molarity of a solution made from one mole of solute and a thousand moles of solvent? Uh, it's that thousand milliliters of solvent. Now, molarity is number of moles per liter. We're going to take one mole, and we're going to put it in one liter solution, right? Because 1,000 milliliters is the same as one liter. 1,000 milliliters is one liter. So molarity is 1 over 1. Well, let's see. That's hard math. 1 over 1 is, <laughs> that's right, 1 molar. Okay? Oh, here we go. It's dissolved, right? We actually had to put it in the solution to make it a 1 molar solution. So 1 molar solution right here. All right. What is the molarity of the solution made from 2 moles in 2,000 milliliters of solvent? Well, we've got molarity is equal to number of moles over liters. There's 2 moles, and this time there's 2 liters. Notice it's a little bit different, 2 liters. So we get 1 molar solution. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. The last one was a 1 molar solution, and so is this one. So there's multiple ways to make 1 molar solutions. All right, what's the molarity of a solution made from two moles of solute and 1,000 mils of solvent? Again, the number of moles over the liters. There's two moles in one liter, so two over one gives us two molar. All right, this is seeming like it's really easy, I hope. Uh, if 
uh, another question here. This one's for the, this one's a little bit different. What's the molarity of the solution made from one mole in 500 milliliters of solvent? It looks like molster cane here is uh, going to help out. Uh, Again, we're dealing with number of moles per liter. Uh, it's one mole is in half a liter solution. Remember here, you're taking one and you're dividing by a fraction. So it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're getting two molar solution. Okay, one divided by 0.5 is two. All right, no, there are several ways to make a two molar solution. You could take uh, one mole and put it in a half molar uh, in a half liter uh, of solution, you could take two moles and put it in, and put them in one liter of solution, or you could take four moles, one, two, three, four, and put them in two liters of solution. All three of these are two liters, uh, two molar solutions. All right. Now, that's the concept. This is the toughest problem we can give you in chemistry. What's the molarity of potassium chloride solution that has a volume of 400 milliliters and contains 85 grams of potassium chloride? All right, if you're thinking about setting this up and you're just going to do this, molarity is 85 grams over 400 milliliters, then you haven't been paying close attention to units. Uh, we have to, if we're going to calculate, we have to use number of moles per liter. So we can't use 400 milliliters because it's not in liters. We can't use grams because it's not in number of moles. So we have to do some conversions to start out with. We're going to start out by converting the potassium chloride into moles. Again, this 74.55, just got it off the periodic table. All right, you get 1.14 moles of potassium chloride. 400 milliliters is actually 0 0.4000 liters. We do our math here. We get 1.14 moles over 0.4 liters. And we find out that the answer is 2.85 moles per liter. Or another way of writing this down, 2.85 mole solution. Okay. And notice this. Uh, the way I just pronounced that, M-O-L-A-R. Uh, this is molarity over here is what we've been calling it. Uh, I'm not quite sure why chemists do this. When you calculate it, it's over here. It is a capital M. They call it molarity in the calculation. But after you're all said and done, they get kind of lazy, and they just call it 2.85 molar, just like those things in the back of your mouth, those teeth, molars. All right. Now, uh, the last thing that I've got here, real life application, this was, uh, this is something that I took off of a bit of an IV medication, uh, just a picture. Notice they tell you how many grams of certain uh, substances you've got here. Uh, and uh, then you also have here uh, a indication of how many millimoles per liter that we have in, um, in the solution in the IV bag. So I thought that this was kind of neat. Uh, note that they're measuring uh, in the medical field. They're measuring in milli. Whoopsie. They're measuring in millimoles per liter. So they're measuring in millimolar solutions. Uh, I think that's because the human body. If you start talking about molar solutions being uh, pumped in through IV, you start talking about bad things happening. All right. Hopefully that was helpful.